I've got Jen Carlquist here. Now, do you like to go by Jen or Jennifer? Jen is good. Jen is good. Awesome. And where do you live? I think you're in California. Yes, I am in the Bay Area of California. So the Monterey Bay. It's beautiful over here. I bet it is. I would love to see that someday. Um, I've been to California. I've been to Los Angeles several times. I've been to San Diego. I've never made it to San Francisco area, but I have been up to the Willits area, which is like the gateway to the Redwood Forest. Is that right? I think so. Yeah. I think so. Wow. So, I've, so I've had like all sorts of different um, touch points around California, but just not I've never been to San Francisco, and then I don't know where Monterey Bay is anyway. <laughs> it's, like two hours, it's two hours south of San Francisco, and we're known for our big aquarium here. We have a beautiful, um, huge aquarium, and so that's the big attraction here. Very cool. Well, tell me a little bit about your background and what, you know, how did you get into what you do? Let me know, you know, are you a doctor or are you, um, or are you some other sort of medical specialist? So I'm a physician assistant, which is basically okay. between a nurse and a doctor. And I originally started as a paramedic and I did that for 13 years working on the streets, basically in the ambulance. Yeah. And then I moved on in for about 12 years as a physician assistant. So I work in the emergency room and I work at a cardiology office. And so I found that while I was on the ambulance that I would have really sick heart patients. Uh -huh. And I just sort of fell in love in figuring out where the mystery was in their heart. So what was causing our ailment? And there's a lot of clues to that. And one of the biggest clues was the EKG, which is that piece of paper that they print out and they hook you mm -hmm. up. And it turns out there's a ton of clues on that. But the other thing that's true about EKGs is that a lot of providers, nurses, doctors, PAs, nurse practitioners, they don't feel comfortable using this tool because there's so many layers of complexity. So what I did was early on when I realized I was getting it and a lot of people weren't, I decided to go on the road and teach it. And so I go all over the country and I just uh, ended my summer speaking tour. And then now what I did was I formatted it and packaged it up the same workshop into a Kajabi course. Oh, and, nice. So yeah. online course. Online course. And you can now, then deliver to people and not have to be right there in person. Exactly. And, and so that's been really instrumental in getting the word out to people that couldn't come to the conferences and they can do it at their own pace. And then Kajabi itself is such a great, um, as you know, just a great, you know, business in a box. And I'm yeah, still sort of a great tool. I'm still sort of realizing all the power in it and trying to utilize all the different pieces of it. But so far, um, I just did a launch, I guess, three weeks ago now, and it's going well so far. I've, I've kind of touched on Facebook ads a little bit and I'm running two right now. And I've been watching your, um, I think it's called Facebook ATM. Make your, make Facebook your ATM is the course, yeah. but it's changing. I'm, I think I'm watching your old one and I was watching your older, older videos selling. This was funny because um, it must've been several years ago when you had the car and you had the little box around your, and it was like, you were so cute. You were oh, like, so adorable. <laughs> oh, you were adorable. <laughs> so it's neat to see where, how far you've come. I mean, and, and you're like an inspiration that, you know, Anybody could do this just if we, if we, you know, really follow your advice and we, you know, go through the steps. So it was really um, inspirational. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a, quite the journey that, uh, and I've, my brand has definitely evolved and changed, but I like to keep some of the things from the past in there, even though I don't always use it in my marketing and my names and so on and so forth. So the games, you like puzzles and games. And yes. Yep. I remember. Yeah. So it's, it's all, it's all started making sense when you look at how you set up your marketing. It's, it's, I get it now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you. I wonder, sometimes I wonder, do people really get me, you know, <laughs> cause I can't I get it. a little eclectic and change things around at times. So um, you became a PA then, a physician assistant after 13 years. And how long has it been since you've been a PA? It's been 12 years now. 12 years now. Okay. So basically half your career, you were doing the ambulance rides and then half your career doing the PA work. And when did you start doing the teaching with the EKG? That was about two years into being a PA. So, Oh, so a while. 
Yeah, and it's really evolved too because you know, as you really refine your teaching style, I've realized that when people learn, the best way to do it is to integrate all three teaching styles. And so I have a tactile portion. I actually, you'll like this, Sally. I actually take the EKG, I give them colored pencils, and I make them color the EKG, the sections of it, so they'll remember it. And so they're having to filter it through and put it on paper in their format. And so that's really engaging. And then I take a real heart and put the EKG next to it. And I say, okay, this is what you're really looking at. And all these people that were missing for me, I kind of do the visual, I do the auditory, and I do this, the tactile. And it's just this, it's this experience where you're always shifting, you're always moving, you're always putting the pieces. And so by the time the three hours are done, people are like, wait, wait, no, keep going. And yeah, every that's single, cool. Every single time. So it's really, really helped people go from really zero to 60 on getting their comfort level up with reading EKGs because they all come in and they're just like scared because it's high risk. If you miss any little bump or any little weird thing that could be a heart attack, there's no miss right there. You have to get it. And so with all those high risk stakes on the, on the board people and they don't know all the findings because they can be so subtle, they're scared and they didn't get enough training. And so I sort of come in and fill that niche mm -hmm. of like, Hey, I know you know the basics, but let's take you through the high risk things that will kill somebody if you miss them, that the machine software is not catching. So it helps keep them safe and it helps really um, give them confidence because we walk through with the colored pencils, which are not scary, and we color on the EKGs. And then by the end of it, they're like, oh, and they're, they're shouting out, oh, that's this, that's this, in three hours, which is- That's nice. And so these are your live workshops that you're talking about doing. That's the live one. And how, how many people do you typically have in the audience when you do that? Well, I get hired in by conferences, so it, it's based on how many people they've attracted. So I'm like a subcontractor, but basically it's been anywhere from like, I'd say 100 was my most. Um, okay. I'll do it for really small, 100 is the most because I'm basically walking around and I'm helping people as I go. So 100 is kind of a little bit unwieldy, but that's been my max. So what about the course is different? I mean, obviously that's going to be videos and maybe what worksheets or what, how are you doing that on? Okay, on so I do like you do with an over the shoulder thing. So I have this um, camera that's set up over my paper and I basically have the EKG and I give them a blank copy in their downloadable portion where you put right. your or worksheets, right. you download it, print it. And then I send them colored pencils. And so they, they watch my video and they work along with me. So they watch the video. They do the same thing on the EKG. And it kind of is like I'm standing right there. Do they, do you tell them get some colored pencils or just no, anything I, or crayons? This, no, because it has to be a certain three colors. And I actually have this box. So I'm a, I'm a painter as well. So oh. I, painted, I painted artwork and I use it as my box graphic. So I have this cute little box that gets mailed. And it's got the, the painting on the outside. No, that yeah. is so cool. Yeah. I love that. So I love that you're a painter. This Okay. It seems like every time I talk to somebody, they're like, used to be an engineer and now they're a voiceover artist or used to do web design and now they teach children how to use Legos in you know, it, it, to learn. I mean, it seems like every time I talk to somebody, they've got that, uh, the, that dual brain power, if you will. Yeah. You've got the creative side and you've got this logical side and that is such a beautiful thing. So thanks. I'm so glad you told me that. Well, my new love, honestly, if I can't get enough of it is marketing. I am just I'm in love with the process. I'm in love with the game that it is. It's a puzzle. It is. And it's just, I'm, it's I'm just, an ever changing one. I know. <laughs> that's what you, you've been keeping us updated on that. So that's been good. Good. Well, so what's next for you? You've got some things coming up. So, yeah, I'm going to a conference actually. I'm not speaking at it. I'm going to it. It's a medical conference. And so I want to get this workshop online in front of them. So that's going to be a pattern that I'm going to use throughout the next year because there's a lot of conferences that I'll actually be at. So if I can market to them from the stage, but also on like Facebook when they're scrolling through, I'm right. like, oh, I saw her face. Oh yeah, she's got to work. Oh yeah, I got to check that out. So because you said um, people have to see something seven times. So yeah, and maybe even more these days with all the distractions that they get. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Now, one of the things, and we can go ahead and talk a little bit about this targeting. We were talking about this in, in our, our member group. Jen is part of my member group, and we have, um, I have a, a marketing program and advertising program where I help coach people through this process for digital marketing. And we have been talking about how to target people while you're at this event. Now, one of the things, it's awesome if you could ever have phone numbers and emails because that's just an automatic that you would be able to market to them, but usually only the event organizers have access to that sort of thing. But when you are an attendee and you are not presenting and you don't have the opportunity to throw out some sort of free resource for people to go get on your website like you would normally do if you were speaking or something like that, the way that you would help to target people would be to narrow down by the location where you are and then to choose the people that are at that location. Now, one of the things that happens is that people have to have their location on on their phone. So there's all sorts of little loopholes or little little trap doors, if you will, that people will fall through and you'll never capture them if they don't have these features on their phone. But some people you will capture. So it's a way to um, drop a pin at the actual location and shoot out the smallest radius that you can um, so that you are geo-targeting, if you will, for that location. And the other thing would be to then narrow down within the detailed targeting to the job titles of all of the people that are at that event that you want to target. Now, you could um, do some other things, too. So, for example, if people follow certain publications if they uh, maybe are in certain organizations, maybe they are members of certain things, you need to do some research there as well. And that was something I was gonna bring up to you uh, whenever we got into this in the group, because we're going to help teach the group this as well. But I think that this will, this will also help them get started and maybe they'll go and start looking for themselves uh, for some sort of event. So what I would like you to think about is, what are the organizations these people are in? Now, I don't know because I'm not in this medical world myself, but the things that I think about typically are like the AMA, the American Medical Association, or yeah. maybe there's a magazine that like everybody in this health world is in tune with, something that might be sitting in doctor's offices all the time. And you could target those specific types of publications and organizations as well as the job titles Okay. so that you will just get in there as many as you possibly can. Now, you don't want this to be a huge, huge, huge audience. You don't know how many um, people are going to really be within that mile radius, but you do want to cover as many touch points as you can in that detailed targeting and then push it out there and see how it goes. You may need to uh, try different things to get people's attention. And one of the things that really helps is to have everything set up ahead of time. Mm -hmm. so you get there, take pictures in front of the signs of the event oh. of yourself or with other people or whatever and go in when you get a break go in and add that to your ads so that the creative portion really speaks to where they are at that very moment awesome they will recognize it though because otherwise people are busy at a conference they're not really paying attention as much to their phone and they're just kind of scrolling by but if they saw the stage and a picture of you in front of it, and you said, hey, such and such conference goers, yeah, and did something like that, it grabs their attention, and next thing you know, you'll have some people commenting. Now, it's not the perfect thing. Uh, it's not you know, going to be the be-all, end-all of reaching people at an event, but it absolutely could get, garner some attention so that you can gain some audiences. The other thing, the other trick is to uh, do a quick video with that as well and not be afraid to 
you know, put a video that's about uh, between five and 15 seconds so that you'll hit the most audience mm -hmm. that you possibly can. Uh, what, you're restricted on the types of video time times that you can have on certain platforms and certain uh, ways that Facebook puts out and Instagram put out the ads. So if you keep it between five and 15 seconds, you're going to hit all the possible methods of getting your message out there. Plus it's easier to uh, create audiences to follow up with later if they saw that video. Much, much better than just an image. So the video would be even better for your retargeting when you're pushing out your course uh, or your freebie actually is what you'll push out and put them into your sales funnel. Yeah, good idea. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yay. Well, I know that you have to go. You don't have much time here, but I think um, that it's been a great talk and I love getting to know you a little bit more and I'd love to hear more about the painting and uh, anything else that you're interested in doing, maybe we'll get to chat again later. Sounds great, Sally. Have a great day and thanks for having me on. All right, thanks. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye.